Hi, this is Matt with Engadget, and I'm here with my colleague Aaron, and we're 20 miles outside of London with a Tesla Model S. We're going to be doing a 400 mile road trip today to the other side of England and back, because... What else do you do when you've got a Tesla Model S for the day? Pretty much. All right, let's go. Well, we needed to go somewhere that was probably around 200 miles away, uh, given the car's got a range of between 200 and 300 miles, maybe a bit more depending on the battery. So I thought Leeds would be a good a place as any, um, but because we've been mucking around this morning, uh, we've only got about 210 miles left on, on, the, on the battery. So I've put into the system that we should probably stop at the nearest uh, supercharger, which is in Northampton. How far is that? Um, I'm thinking about 50 miles away from where we first started. Oh. Um, and then after that, I believe there's a really nice place in Nottingham um, that we could stop and maybe kind of like do some good shots of the of the car and us in it, things like that. Get some photos from me. Well, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Justify your... Uh... Justify my existence. <laughs> <laughs> So we've just topped up now and got us all the way up to Leeds. It kind of feels like if you're in a Tesla, the supercharger network is your lifeblood. You just can't exist without it. Yeah, so it's interesting because when we first set off and we put the destination into the, into the sat-nav, um, it kind of said that we could theoretically make it to Leeds with about 7% battery spare, but the Tesla itself errs on the side of caution. And all it's trying to do is basically say, will get you there and make sure that you have 25% battery. So it suggested we either stop in Barnsley or there's another one that was in Northampton on the way um, and that's the one we stopped at. But I can imagine like if you had one every say 50 miles from like southern England to, to the north tip of Scotland, mm. you'd be cool. Like I don't know how that works in kind of where they'd be able to put them and where there's scope to put up a supercharger. Um, yeah, I mean, realistically like most countries they have service station and it seems like both sort of distances that you have where it's about 50 miles between service stations seems accurate because right now all around London I think there are about maybe 20 supercharger stations in London which is perfect for me because all of my driving is in and around the southeast of the UK I can pretty much get anywhere and back again absolutely right but we're driving up through the heart of England yeah. right now on like the main road that goes from the south of England up to the north yeah and there's maybe two or three along the route that don't require to take a detour. That's just not good enough. So we're in Leeds. <laughs> Car's in the charge again, I've had a bite to eat, and it's seven o'clock. How do you feel? If I'm being completely honest, I'm absolutely shattered. That's because it's, I've been up since 6 a.m. and it's a 13 hour day for me already. Um, normally on a, on a journey like this, I'd probably book a hotel and stay the night or get a train so that I didn't have to worry about the drive home. Yeah, it doesn't always feel safe, especially driving late at night, after, mm. and especially after you've been driving all day. Yeah. But this car can drive itself, right? Not exactly. I mean, it can with the autopilot feature, which uh, moderates the speed limit for you, uh, will keep you in your lane and, and detect all of the cars going in and out of your lane. Mm. Um, and hopefully, this is what we can rely on getting home. So we're on the way back to London now, and you are on driving right now. Yeah, we're auto driving right now. So there's not many cars on the road, um, and what better time to kind of test out the feature. So basically, like when you're going, all you have to do is just flick the bottom paddle towards you once to put it into cruise control mode, which basically will look using the cameras in the car to see what speed it is and keep you going at an even speed mm -hmm. to the speed limit. So if it, if it gets slower or faster, we will speed up or slow down. Um, and if you do another second one towards you, it puts you into 
autopilot mode. So we come up to a lorry right now. If I just tell it what I want to do, indicate. So that's just turned without me doing anything. Cool. And um, also we're going around the corner. Yep. So we're doing it at speed, and it's also doing it. Um, it has to make sure that my hands are on the steering wheel, uh -huh. otherwise it won't do it, and it will relinquish control and give it back to me. Gotcha. But so, if, for example, I want to go back left again, hands on the wheel steering wheel, and we're back into the furthest left lane. Gotcha. So we're here at the Arsenal Stadium. Just driven 200 miles to get here. Yeah a lot of it on the self-driving modes. How did you find it? It's really pretty good. Um, I didn't expect to rely on it as much. Um, but yeah, we kind of like, we did probably 90% of the whole journey on autonomous mode, which was pretty neat. I mean, we did most of the journey, like 90% of it, without me touching the, 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 the pedal at all. So, you know, in terms of that, safe, like we, we got home really quickly um, mm. and the whole process was kind of like assistive but kind of it doesn't replace what you would normally do you know this yeah. isn't like a full autonomous replacement but as an aid it did help us get home safely absolutely yeah we got home safely we got home quickly we had a few hiccups within not understanding some signs but other than that yeah you have to keep your eyes on the road but for for and all intents and purposes pretty good now i'm going back to south london and you're going back to essex yeah so i've still got another hour thanks <laughs> <laughs>